We are now talking about the actual value chains. Low investment inflow and so on and, and so forth. So, what has been the approach of Nigeria to try and mitigate this problem? Ever since independence, there have been several strategies and policies adopted to promote accelerated actual productivity. I will not bore you with the details of all this. I have concentrated on the last few years. In the last two administrations, we have the actual transformation agenda, 2011 to 2015. And under the current government, we have the actual promotion policy, which is running now since 2016 and is due to exhaust in 2020. It's one of the cardinal parts of the economic recovery and growth plan to take Nigeria out of recession, which was done successfully, but we now need to stabilize the economy and, and move forward. The transformation agenda, a number of achievements were recorded during the implementation in terms of input supply, in terms of financing, in terms of production increases, where we have some increase in metric tons of rice, of cassava, and so on that have been produced. But from the review to develop the actual promotion policy, we see that there is still a long way to go. And so the actual promotion policy adds the guiding principles to take agriculture as a business. Agriculture as key to long-term economic growth and security, and that is a step that was missed in the earlier planning. A country cannot just transit straight from agriculture to services without manufacturing, and that is what led to jobless growth that we've had. So agriculture is intricately related to industrial promotion. The outputs from agriculture will be channeled towards becoming raw materials for industrial production. And that is the essence of the value chain approach. Also, prioritization of crops has been adopted. For instance, rice, some emphasis, wheat, cassava, and gradually we can extend to other crops. Also, policy integrity is emphasized and the linkage of agriculture to the other areas. So, in spite of that and the steps already taken by the central bank to reshape the financing of agriculture through several instruments, including the Anchor Borrowers Program, Nigeria is still down the road in terms of producing enough for us to eat and for exports and as raw materials for industry. So how do we then assure sustainable agricultural productivity and food security? And that is the main plank of this lecture, the basic principles. We must focus on the four critical areas of agriculture. One is crop production, and under crop production, the issue of inputs is very important, as I have said earlier in what actual extensionists have said, research, farmer, input, linkage system. Input is very critical, and so we must focus on farming inputs. And what are the most critical farming inputs? Provision of effective and efficient well planned farm machinery and equipment supply and hiring and management system. Without it, we shall be limited in our productivity. And the table that I showed earlier has indicated that. And several analyses have shown this. In the analysis of Price Waterhouse, just by doubling the number of tractors we have, we lead to increases in the rice productivity that we have had. These are properly detailed here. In addition to that, high yielding crops must be developed. Our research institutes must be up to the task. 
and um, IITA is doing a lot in this regard. Other research institutes are also uh, trying. But it will surprise us that IITA is based here in Nigeria. And it took a long time for Nigeria to even realize that we can benefit from the work that IITA is doing. So, basically, we must believe in ourselves, in internal ability. We must also increase the use of fertilizers and boost irrigation for all year round cropping. Irrigation should not be the preserve of only the arid northern parts of the country alone. Irrigation should make productivity for all year round productivity possible in all parts of the country. Now, people have also advocated adoption of genetically modified crops, and there is a lot of controversy still going on on that. It's one of the effects of adopting modern technologies. When it comes to non-food crops, I think you shouldn't throw out the baby with the bathwater. You should consider very critically adoption of genetically modified crops in crops such as cotton and others that are not directly edible crops. Now, from, apart from crops, we also need to focus on livestock. And this is an area of currently ongoing controversy in the country. But the livestock sector holds a lot of promise for the country. And in the actual promotion plan, it is given due recognition. And but the approach that is being adopted, the approach that is being adopted now is what is giving us some concern. Because livestock is not just cattle. Livestock is more than cattle. And so, there has been a lot of uh, concern raised about the issue of, of livestock. If we look critically into the National Livestock Transformation Plan, it is a good program, but shrouded in some controversies that needs to be resolved. It should cover not just cattle, but other livestock, sheep and goats, poultry, piggery, rabbitry, and all livestock. You can argue that the cultural practice of these ones already involve intensive farming rather than the ranging of cattle. But such a program can only succeed if it is made to be inclusive of all aspects. If you look critically at the pillars of the National Livestock Program, you'll find that it is focused predominantly on cattle, issue of conflict resolution, justice and peace, humanitarian relief, and so on. All these are directed to solving the cattle rearing problem. That problem must be solved. The country has to solve that problem, but it must not be solved at the exclusion of other uh, uh, livestock. And that's the point that is being emphasized here, that there has been some confusion of the National Livestock Transformation Plan with another initiative of the federal government, which is the Rural Grazing Area, uh, the short form of which is RUGA which is being planned by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. However, the group that aggregates cattle breeders, the Mayeti Allah, claimed disingenuously that the National Livestock Transformation Program was synonymous with Ruga Initiative, which has been refuted. But there is need to redefine that program to include all livestock. And that is what he said there, that livestock 
is not cattle. It's not cattle alone. There are two other initiatives that have been taken that lend credence and make people to be very, very resistive of this approach. Under the National Water Resources Strategy, there is also a plan that all the water bodies, the banks, must also be vested in the federal government, exclusively for pastoral development. This also sends wrong signals. There is also the issue of granting radio license uh, to the federal government for development of radio for a particular group, the Fulani Radio. And this is what has led to the coming with the acronym of Fulanization Agenda, which makes it very difficult to be able to proceed with the plan. So, an otherwise very good initiative, but conceived not to be holistic and inclusive, is being destroyed within self-inflicting and conducive for operating environment by the federal government. So, there is need to uh, take a critical look at this. The other two sectors also, the fisheries and aquaculture sector, and also the forestry resources development. In terms of the fishery sector, Nigeria has capacity to attain the desired feed soil sufficiency within a short period of time, if the numerous aquaculture potentials in terms of land and water bodies is taken advantage of. And in the past, we have built a large domestic fishery economy and potentials are estimated at almost 2.5 million metric tons of fish annually. So we can attain self-sufficiency in fish production if appropriate steps are taken. We can also extend to developing our forest resources and so on. Now, when we have looked at all the four sectors, they are what we can refer to as cross-cutting issues. Issues that are cut across the various uh, sectors, either crop or fisheries or livestock or forestry. Extension is key to success. And it amazes one that various governments in the country are not paying sufficient attention to the issue of extension. Extension is very critical because a large proportion of productivity in the agricultural sector is still done by the small farmers. And so, if you want to harness their energy for higher productivity, extension is very important. So that the links with research, with inputs, can be very intensified. So, the federal government took a step to have a department of actual extension at the national level. That has been an improvement because otherwise it's states that have extension. And there is no synergy between the federal and the state governments. So there is needs to reform the extension system. Improvement in extension can transform our agriculture seriously. Land ownership also needs to be corrected. Rural infrastructures also needs to be corrected. But by far the most important steps that we need to take relate to the actual value chains to set up processing industries that will take the product of agriculture to begin to develop the industrial sector. And that is in the actual value chains and we have examples in other parts of the world where this is, is going on. In South Africa, for example, in the Durban area, you have the Dubi actual processing zone that has all the components. You have the cargo terminal, you have the city, you have the trade zones. And within the actual sector, you have all sorts of greenhouses producing crops that are shipped all over the world, including to Nigeria. A number of our products derive from this enclaves where this is being done. And this is not rocket science. These are things that can easily be adopted. We also need to encourage the spinning off of agroventures and foster collaboration between agro-industry and the academia. 
And that is where a number of young Nigerians are coming up. Government needs to put policies in place to encourage this development and harness their energy. Government cannot create the number of jobs that will solve the problem of unemployment in this country. But when you unleash the power of the small and medium enterprises through the creativity of the young ones, you have multiplicity of jobs being created. So the focus should be on creating the conditions that we encourage the youths into agriculture so that they can own farms, own processing industries, and begin to develop little, little industrial uh, complexes. And this brings us to the issue of digital technology. But before then, let me say that the challenge is not just for Nigeria alone. It's only an African condition. And that is why the African Development Bank is taking steps in this regard to accelerate the development of these processing zones. As the president of the African Development Bank said, what is needed is what is called staple crop processing zones. The zones will be very vast areas, um, as shown in this sort of uh, picture in South Africa, within rural areas set aside and managed for agribusiness and food manufacturing industries and other agro-allied industries. They will be enabled with right policies and infrastructure such as roads, energy, ICT, and so on, rail, rail, and so on, and ports to reduce the business cost for food processing and agro industry. And government will need to provide incentives to allow these sort of zones um, to develop. Um, as I said, the African Development Bank has programs on this and Nigeria is already keen into it. But Nigeria, on our own, can set aside funds and develop these complexes without even funds from either the World Bank or the African Development Bank. What is su surprising is that we only wait until we are prompted by these other external bodies to know what to do. So this is where a change of attitude and the political will will have to come up. We also need to mainstream and smart agriculture, climate smart agriculture, into agro-environmental practice. And this is already happening in some areas, and this needs to be are seriously intensified. There are some success stories that we can uh, mention. Uh, first, in Ghana, a few years ago, the government of Ghana embarked on a program of mechanization to relieve labor shortages in parallel with the expansion of irrigated agriculture from 8,000 to about 2,000 hectares of land between 204 and 207 at that time. And concentrating on the use of smaller tractors, 30 to 50 kilowatts, and 5,000 of these tractors were used and distributed to farmers. So, the tractors were sold to farmers on food cost recovery. And the management of the tractors was by young knowledgeable people who can ensure that farmers have access to these machines. So that is the sort of model that we are also recommending for Nigeria, that young graduates and those who have had some formal training can form groups of people who will supply new inputs to farmers both machines, seeds, fertilizer, and this becomes enterprises that will be made viable. And in Nigeria, the policy on tractor availability and the strategy to boost rice production has also benefited uh, from this. We 
can compare as done in that table the pace of mechanization in Nigeria and with India and some other countries in terms of rice. A similar hiring service scheme in India increased mechanization from 0.3 hectares per hour to 1.9 horsepower per hectare, promoting self-sufficiency in rice production and placing the economy at the second large, largest rice producer in the world. So these are programs that we feel that Nigeria should concentrate upon more and more. We also have some experience with rural women in one of the projects that we handled in OAU. Uh, but this we will find in the lecture. This fifth thing is the centers of excellence. Um, we have two or three in agriculture in Nigeria. Altogether, Nigeria had 10 till uh, early this year when we had additional seven, making 17. The three are the one in Funab, uh, Makodi, and Kano. The center of excellence in Kano is for arid agriculture, while the one in Abelkuta and um, uh, Makodi are for agriculture generally and for food security. Now, these are centers where research is concentrated, and in partnership with other research institutes, this can be uh, avenues for transforming Nigerian agriculture. Now, the future of Af African agriculture is in technology, youths, and entrepreneurship. First is the necessity to develop indigenous technological capability in agriculture. In addition to the deficit in tractor mechanization for rice noted earlier, post harvest operations including milling, polishing, bagging, along with the rice value chain depend wholly on imported technology with little effort committed to developing indigenous alternatives, which will have had a lot of multiplier effect is true of all other crops. What is more, the raw materials available in Nigeria, including agro solid materials, have peculiar characteristics that will be more amenable to people with knowledge in the way they are handled, the way they are processed. Um, those who will have the lecture, with, that is a, a box of needy group of Indigenous technology development. Uh, Niji is based in Oyo State, and they've been able to produce some local tractors, all built from assembly. You have their tractors, not just tractors, also other farm machinery. And what they've done is to engage in intensive training for the operators who will operate these machines. If we have these machines produced in Nigeria, why must we go and be importing? machinery from other countries. And this is the question that every Nigerian must begin to ask our policy makers. If we don't patronize what we produce, there is no way they will, they will improve. It is true continuous use and improvement. The feedback from farmers, this machine, we used it, it has this shortcoming and so on. It goes back prove on it, and we begin to grow. And that is what India has done. And today, India sources almost all the components of its tractors, of its machines, locally. And that is what we term local ingenuity. First, we can import some machines, strip them down, and adapt them to local conditions, which is the initiative that is being done here. The local ingenuity means industrial is foiled locally. Hence, local ingenuity must be encouraged. Every nation is based on their local demands. India imports less than five of all the components that goes into production of its tractors, less than 
of the components that goes into tractors. And today, India produces more tractors than any other country. They produce more milk and so on than other countries. And it's from the same cattle that is giving us more problem in Nigeria. So, I say here, the president is right in stressing that, quote, we shall source our raw materials and technology locally. That must be put into serious effect. And there must be no I mean, deviation. So, we have to start from within ourselves. And we must adapt these technologies appropriately to our own local conditions. And that is what the experience of Niji Farm has indicated. When officials ignore technical advice and they go and just bring all sorts of machines from overseas, they create more problems for the country. We have more damaged equipment in this country than those that are working. Uh, officials from Nkama here, there has been a national survey where you have so many machines in the country, but only about 30% of them are functional. That is the problem of when people don't have the knowledge, manage all these developments. What is wrong in calling on the right people with the right knowledge to import the machines, if you must import at all? Uncam is saddled with testing machines that come from overseas and make sure they fit into our conditions. But all these are bypassed by uh, policy, um, uh, policy makers and politicians. And so, we will come uh, later to emphasize the need for political will, not just uh, technical knowledge uh, in all this. So, I am particularly very happy that we have the likes of this man coming up. Uh, don't forget that in this country we've had two tractor manufacturing plants in the past, Sire and Fiat, Kaduna. And they did very well for some time, but all those we have lost have been cumulative. And if those machines are there since those days, we will have improved and we will have had more productivity. So, let me quickly go on. Um, we need to encourage the use of science, technology, and innovation, and what we call convergent technologies. Now, Serious changes are taking place all over the world in technology. And Nigeria is just an onlooker. It is what comes that we just consume anyhow. Our youths have the ability to be able to adapt some of this knowledge and do great things. I think that is what is the End Power Initiative, another initiative by the federal government is trying to do. But the scale is still very small. We all need to be involved in Given our use, um, the ability to be able to show their restlessness, their inventive and innovative creativity. And some of them are coming up with a number of industrial hubs. This is what needs to be supported and to be promoted in the country. So, making youth agriculture, making agriculture a youth enterprise is something that must be done. If we don't entice the youth to go into farming, farming will remain what it is today. And that mentality has to change. When people say we must go back to the land and farm the way we used to be, I'm going to give a quotation like that. No. Farming must change. We must make it possible that the youth can go back to farming. The average age of farmers today is nothing to write home about. And there is no way you can bring modern technology and introduce to these farmers and they will comprehend very well. But you all know that if you have a problem with your handful, give it to your five or six year old child. It will unlock the something for you very easily. That is the potential that we capitalize upon. Now, I say here, the Nollywood analogy. And I want us to consider this very well. 20, 30 years ago, nobody 
cares about what is going on in Africa. People listen to news on BBC, on VOA, on CNN, and so on. You don't see African content. But that changed by the impact of what Nollywood has done to that industry. If you go anywhere in Africa today, you will see that they are either watching African magic, Nollywood, and so on and so forth, and it's extending across the oceans to Canada, to America, and so on. So, in all that I have said so far, our greater concern as Africans is that Africa must be part of the evolution of the great technological transformations that is pervading the world as creators of content and not just consumers. It is the African knowledge system, our universities, that can transform and rescue the continent. The Nollywood analogy gives us hope that we can do it. By putting African content into the global movie picture industry, the narratives have since changed. As more and more people now watch African magic movies, and this is es escalating to African music, African fashion, and you see the trend that is going. So, African science and innovation and African agriculture must emulate these developments and situate African scientific technological innovation in the locus of local and global transformations. If nothing else is taken away from this lecture, that is what I want us to take away. We must believe in ourselves. We must believe in our own creativity. The, the solutions that we have identified are very obvious. Produce more food, prevent spoilage, process the food, make the food to become part of the industry, the value chain. People are doing it in other countries. Ghana is making effort now. Botswana, uh, Kigali, Rwanda, from the ashes of the genocide a few years ago, they are making giant strides. And they are leaving us behind. Everybody is laughing at Nigeria. What is happening to these giants? And yet the population is growing. Youths are coming out and they are not doing anything. Maybe the exception is what, the ones that Landmark is producing. At least we can see that they are doing something uh, wonderful. So that is the trend that we must encourage. From what I've said, there is a caveat. Without well-coordinated intersectoral economic planning that provides targeted financing from government for government priority programs, backed with necessary political will by both the executive and legislative of government, all the lofty plans will not yield desired outcomes. In other words, we cannot divorce even the best technically sound initiatives from the advance of the overall sound economic operating environment and favorable and strong political will, bolstered by informed and transformational cross-sectoral coordination of the economy. The successes recorded under the actual promotion program and noted earlier can be attributed to the innovative actual and re-sector financing strategy of the central bank and NISA, which energized the APP policies. The logical follow-up to close the gap with research grant policy framework is to invest creatively in unleashing the knowledge, creativity, and innovation potentials of our universities as informed by the few centers of excellence that are making waves. And maybe the university system has not actually demonstrated, has not publicized the work that is being done. One of the Centers of Excellence, the one at um, uh, Redeemers University on infectious diseases, was the one that saved us from Ebola and laser fever, the recite that was going on there. Recently, there was a pass through at the American Embassy that um, led to some panic. And they sent the pass through to Redeemers for analysis. 
and send some the same samples to overseas for analysis. Of course, the shipping cost to go overseas takes more time. And so the analysis from Edema was ready. And by the time the analysis came back from overseas, people even adjoined what was done here locally to be more superior. So, why don't we recognize our own local prowess and do things and challenge our institutions to solve problems? I believe that our universities can do a lot. So, I'll just briefly round up on intervention by actual universities and others. Example is uh, Landmark University here. The purposive establishment of universities of agriculture is premised on the recognition of the special role for them. Hence, each of them, along with those centers of excellence, and indeed, all universities should carve out a special role in teaching, research, and civic engagement for the overarching goal of achieving full security by 2030, as in the SDGs, or in the worst, by 2050, as NUC is leading the university to develop a strategy. Because by 2050, Nigeria population will double to about 400 million plus, and will be the third largest country in the world. And that is a huge problem if we don't create the food, the health, the everything that we are going to need. So the country must have a think tank to start thinking ahead what is going to happen in future. Now, I just use this to summarize the fact that it is modern technology that is going to change the game, digital technology, and this is what they use among. It's a tractor that operates with drones. And, you know, it's a wonderful uh, uh, creation. But I think the, the youth, they know more about, about this. I've talked about the lessons of uh, Nollywood and so on. So, agricultural research centers, what they must do, and I think we don't have to look too far. And that is in a way returning to where I started, the hallmark of Landmark University. Landmark is credited with production of all food needs of the institution, as well as that of our counterpart university, Covenant University. And I've seen this when, since arriving yesterday, I have gone around and I've seen the way industry is shown in all sectors of the university. This is exemplary and instructive of the immense possibilities in the university system in meeting the cardinal objectives of national food security. The compelling landmark vision has a philosophy anchored on breaking new grounds for the purpose of spreading the agrarian revolution on the African continent. It is very important for us to do this in partnership with the industry, with the society, and ensure that all stakeholders in agriculture work together. It would be nice for landmarks to cooperate with the likes of National Center for Agrarian Mechanization, Niji Farms that is producing tractors, so that your students can have first-hand experience in dealing with such machines. So, by mainstreaming stakeholders of the university, especially students, into agriculture, through the uh, uh, agripreneurship pro trainings, where students are exposed to various activities, this will help in ensuring that the students that come out of here are students that and respond to the needs of the country. From the text of the lecture, we have extracted the challenges of agri African and Nigerian agriculture, and we have outlined some of the things that needs to be done. We have to go back to farming, but not to the old agriculture. 
Agriculture must be used friendly, value chain enterprise farms to put food on the table and feed and fiber to energize our industries and correct the distortions of jobless growth. From this, it is clear that here in Landmark, we have found a model of a system of training that works and which can be uh, strengthened. This is why I have taken great pain to package this lecture so I can be a guide for future development. And I pledge pro bono to be available to assist the university further in developing all these initiatives. So, Landmark University students are in the field of agriculture. And you can see that it's not just cattle, there is goat there. And so, the National Livestock Program must cater for all the livestock we have in the country. I'm going to conclude now, but before I conclude, let me share this, what is an expert said. And he happens to be Chief Executive Officer of Livelihood Homes, uh, Mr. Kelly Nwogu, which was just a few days ago. With the right kind of investment in agriculture, youths and other categories of Nigerians will be gainfully employed, thereby reducing crime in the society. Agriculture has a lot of potential for our country, especially in the area of job creation and tackling poverty. We must bring we must begin to produce more rice, more cassava, and others in large scale so that we can export. I will say so that we can process them locally using local machinery and so on. And he says that is why we need to go back to farming. But the spoiler, to do it the way we used to do in the past. That's the bit where I quarrel with this statement. We cannot continue to do it the way we do in the past. Agriculture has to be transformed to entice the use. So, in conclusion, we have reviewed the, and analyzed the imperatives of transforming Nigerian and African agriculture to achieve adequate productivity commensurate with the goals of food, feed, fiber sufficiency and security, as well as facilitating the structural transformation of national economies to more productive and competitive industrial production status. The task has become more urgent with the growing population, considerable number of who are youths who need to be gainfully employed in modern agriculture as an agro-industry as fulfilled and successful entrepreneurs, farmers, and industrialists. This transformation challenges and presents immense opportunities to our knowledge institutions, especially the universities, who must rise to the occasion, develop and lead the implementation of viable plans for sustainable mechanization, livestock transformation, and post harvest revolution in Nigeria. Unfortunately for us as intellectuals and technocrats, we cannot divorce even the best policies from the ambience of overall economic operating environment favorable and strong political will, bolstered by informed and transnational cross-sectional coordination of economy. However, if all efforts are genuinely geared towards patriotic sustainable development, we can be assured of the difference and synergy of policy, goals, coordination, strategic intervention and activities, expected output and the desired output for a life of prosperity for all our citizens, all over the noobs and cranny of the country, and ultimately the African continent. So, we need to send in the drones to rescue our agriculture. And the future of agriculture is in the use. And I hope the graduating class of 2019 will be assured that their future can be made on the farm and not in the streets roaming about looking for jobs, but tilling the farm and becoming proud entrepreneurs and industrialists, just as they have been prepared by Landmark University.
one more time, please. Let's put our hands together for the guest lecturer. That was thought-provoking. Please may we be seated. This is further validating the assertion of the Chancellor that there's no software for hunger. Thank you very much, sir. May I invite the Registrar Landmark University Pastor Dr. James Ndako for the next assignment. Please put your hands together as we welcome. <laughs> I have the honor this morning to invite, this afternoon to invite forward the representative of the Chancellor, Pastor Olumiwa Yemi Oyeni, for the Chancellor's remark. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Please, let's be seated. I have the honor and privilege of God to be here this afternoon in order to honor this gathering, the lecture and the university by the Chancellor, our father, Bishop David Oyedepo, who is busy in some other assignments and will have wished to be here. I'm sure the Vice Chancellor has sent forward that message earlier on, and I'm just buttressing it. But he has decided that. So members of the Board of Regents should come here to make appearance for him. I'll start by thanking the guest lecturer, Professor Michael O. Faborode, for that wonderful lecture package in Lokawa wisdom. Uh, the fourth graduating lecture that I will be attending landmark out of the six. And I think I've benefited more even though I came in in the midst of the lecture with this lecture, and I'm promising that this book will not end up in the shelf. It will become a manual for me because I'm so interested in it. And thank God I'm one of the youth. Am I not? I don't have gray hair. that you are inciting into agriculture. You say the future of agriculture in Nigeria is in the youth, even in Africa. And with digital agriculture, we will reach there. Because truly, as you said, we cannot be having modern technology in the hand of old folks. What people see in agriculture and in farming is poverty and misery, backwardness. But if the youth is to be incited and brought into farming and agriculture, which I think is a, I know, is a noble profession, then the agricultural revolution that we are yearning for in Africa will arrive speedily at our doorstep. I want us to
to appreciate more the guest lecturer, Professor Fabo Rode, for this wonderful lecture. We are grateful, and I am particularly grateful that I came. I want to thank the Vice Chancellor who made spirited efforts to ensure that the Chancellor is part of this gathering. We thank you very much. And uh, we have gathered some thoughts, and the documents will be delivered to the Chancellor. I'm sure he will reach out to you. Thank you very much, sir. May we all be seated. For a special presentation that will be coming up, it is my privilege to invite the Vice Chancellor, Landmark University, Professor Adini Olayunju. Please put your hands together as it comes forward. What a privilege this morning to invite once again my mentor, engineer professor Mike Faborodi, to come forward. Here in Landmark, we always mark everybody that step on our ground. Not to talk of somebody that have come with a well packaged something that we will be using in the next few years that will help us in what we are driving, the vision and the mission of Landmark University. And so, sir, on behalf of the Landmark University community, on behalf of our proprietor base, the chairman and the chancellor of this great university, our spiritual father, Dr. David Oyedepo, members of Board of Regents of this great university, our management, and of course, the class of 2019, the royal sets, we are presenting a token of our love to you. May I invite the Registrar Lamarck University for the goodwill messages? Please let's welcome the Registrar Lamarck University, Dr. James Ndako. The Chancellor, sir, permit me to stand on all the real protocols. This, at this point, we want to take goodwill messages and special recognition of our guest. To start with this morning, I want to specially recognize members of the Board of Regents here seated. Please, congregation, can we give a clap offering again to Jesus for their presence in this gathering. Equally recognized this morning is Mr. Daudu Isiaka Abolari, the Civil Defense Corps Marshal here this morning. We equally to recognize ACC, Olayinka Aditunji, the unit commander, FRSC, Omaron Sector. Equally recognized this morning is the DPO, CSP John of Omaron Station. We equally have here this morning Mr. Olajide Awunusi, the DSS commander, Europe and the local government area. Equally recognized this morning is Inspector Ekea Bang Samuel John of the Explosive Ordnance Device Unit. You are most welcome. And all other invest, uh, invited guests here this morning whose names are not mentioned, 
you are most specially welcome. In this order, very briefly this morning, I want to call on the following for their goodwill messages. Professor Awonosi, the team lead, NUC Student Support Accreditation Team. It will be closely followed by engineer Dr. Ogunjiri, chairman NIE Kwara State Chapter. Thereafter, Dr. David A. Okonade from Obafemi Aulowo University will follow with his own going message. I want to call on Professor Awonisi. Shall we welcome him forward with a clap? Chancellor, with the protocol established duly deferred to, I will bring you warm felicitations from Professor Rashid, the Executive Secretary, National Universities Commission, who I do believe will be here with you physically tomorrow, and to say very quickly that when we were privileged to step on your campus a couple of days ago, we were confronted with a very unique landscape, really, and lush green and, ser and a lot of serenity. And we had a hunch that something unusual is happening here. And when we were inside, we saw. We were particularly enthralled by the passion for automation of processes involved in the agri system. We saw automation processes. We even saw in terms of best processes in research. As you now have developed systems based on hydro that you can now have groundless plants and groundless that you produce even crops that do not depend on soil. Those two us are your unique landmarks. You're really breaking, uh, uh, groundbreaking research in agriculture. And coming back today and listening to a distinguished academic and academician deliver a lecture that focused on me mechanization as a very significant intervening variable in the agri-production process and value chain shows that you are really in a very good business and doing very well. I therefore congratulate your students today who of course will be going as ambassadors and who we do believe by the grace of God will be drivers of new initiatives and intervention in the much needed food security in Nigeria. Finally, we want to congratulate Landmark University for one, identifying the challenges in the agricultural system, two, for proposing and in actual fact, actualizing solutions through the best practices in research and also practice. And finally, and three, for throwing into public sphere and public conscience a discourse or lecture of this nature that we have listened to today that indeed we believe will help us in the drive for food security as part of our national de development. And so for us, indeed we came and we have seen and we are proud of you. Congratulations on your CIS convocation ceremony. Still maintaining the existing protocol, I'm Engineer Dr. O.E. Ogujiri. I'm standing here wearing two caps, one for the Executive Director, National Center for 
agricultural mechanization. The ED made concerted effort to be here. Since last week we've been discussing, and he said he will be here. But there's a special program that will be coming up today also somewhere that he wanted to shift that one. But around 4 o'clock yesterday, he called me and said, please, you have to stand in for me that I will not be able to come. So he sends his greetings to the university community. He sends his greetings to the vice chancellor for the good work he's doing. He sends his greetings to our own Professor Mike Faborode, who we, the agri-engineers in Quara State, of which I'm privileged to be leading, standing in for them. We're here to lend our support to our home father in the profession, and he's doing wonderfully well. I remember some many years, decades ago, we were in a conference, and Professor Faber already said, there is no agribusiness without mechanization. Since that day, it sticks to my brain. It entered into me that there is no agricultural business without mechanization. And until that is done, we are not getting anywhere in food production. So whether we like it or not, agriculture is the only profession that can provide jobs for over 150 million. And I, stand to, I still stand to be corrected. Because the electrical engineers will get job there, civil engineers will get job there, mechanical engineers will get job there, mechatronics engineers will get job there. Talk of any engineering, they will get their own job in agriculture. So there's no running away from agriculture. It is the only profession you do that you won't have to kill yourself. If you develop robots, if you develop a missile, or the one the Iran is building now, nuclear weapon, you only building need to destroy. But agriculture is the only profession you do and you are building to actually fill the whole, uh, whole world and encourage others to continue living. So on this note, I was meditating in the night and I said this landmark, they are always doing things in a different way. And the thought came to me, said it's not common sense, but God's sense. And when you do things that is God's sense, it goes beyond common sense. And that is what we are all witnessing in Landmark as of today. If a private university can come thus far within a few years of establishment, I'm yet to know how they, because the Bible says, Hi, and the children the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders. In Israel, see the Lord, God of hosts. So I think the signs and wonders are beginning to manifest in, the, in what we are witnessing landmark today. And we hope that this will be sustained so that in the nearest future, landmark will actually be recognized worldwide as the university that has actually marked the land correctly. Thank you. I'm David Okwande from the Department of Agri and Environmental Engineering of Afemaolo University. Let me crave the indulgence of this August gathering to stand on the existing protocol and to bring felicitations from the Department of Agri and Environmental Engineering of Bafemaolo University and also to congratulate the royal set, the next set of pathfinders. I equally want to felicitate with Lama University and congratulate this university on the occasion of this sixth convocation lecture. It is my prayer that as the pathfinders are released, they will hit the ground running and they will be able to take landmark even to greater heights when they represent landmark outside. Congratulations, amazing landmark university. And I pray that the university shall continue to be breaking new grounds. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor of Lamarck University, all 
the good messages are deeply appreciated. Once again, Roya said, congratulations. May I invite the Chairman Ceremonies Committee, Dr. Ogadima Richuku, for the next assignment, which is announcement. Please put your hands together as we have the Chairman. Thank you very much, the Chancellor, sir. Let me respectfully observe the already established protocols. Let's make a few announcements. All students should take note that immediately after this event, you are expected to be in your respective venues for the holding activities. All engineering students should also take note of their NSCE Nigeria Society of Engineering induction is taking place at the International Conference Center 